This is Pokey's pendant, Po Pendant 1. They, uh, you use this for moving your CNC machine around on the X, Y and Z axis and you can turn here on and off and you will have the encoder giving some signals to move uh, forward and backwards and it is very easy to use. You will uh, just hold the button and then turn and of course you need to tell which uh, one to turn uh, so you have the options X, Y, Z and 4th, 5th and 6th axis here so it's capable of moving six axes and you have a speed selector here, 1, 10 and 100. So sitting here like this would then move the uh, X axis fast uh, forward and backwards. Very handy, you have an e-stop right at hand here so you can press and then the e-stop is engaged. On the back side uh, there is some magnetic strips that will allow you to put it up on a uh, metal uh, control box or something so you can have it handy. To connect it to uh, the, uh, the controller board, here is the uh, Pokey 57 CNC. You don't have a connector that fits the DB25. However, uh, it's fairly simple. You just need a converter cable, DB25 to a, uh, this, uh, this type of cable here, the flat cable, and then you connect it to the uh, connector there, and then again here, and then it should be operational as soon as you have uh, your Mark III or Mark IV uh, plug-in running. This is the PONET keyboard. It's an all-aluminum item with dust and water resistant keys on it. Uh, they come in three blocks and uh, you have two LEDs here, one indicating power and another the status. And for each of the keys there's an LED up at the corner that you can set for various purposes, for example when you press it or you can use it as a status uh, LED. <coughs> if we turn it around, it's approximately 4 or 5 millimeter thick. You can see from the back that it mounts with some M3 uh, screws and essentially it mat, uh, mounts flat, however you need to have a hole that allows for the connector to be connected. And you can use two connectors, either the bus here or this one. Both of them have uh, similar connectors on the Pokey 57 CNC, so you have one here so it would connect to this and this one here will connect to this one. So either way you can connect it to uh, to the board. And this one also is uh, compatible with the smaller controllers that uh, is also sold uh, or produced by the uh, by this uh, company. So you can connect it here. This is a close up of the keys. First block you have a cycle start, feed hold, stop and reset. Some of the buttons you use a lot uh, in Mark 3 and uh, Mark 4 for that matter. Uh, basically this is all the execution. So you have single step, you have load, rewind, reverse, close, run from here, optional stop, reason, block delete, edit, set next line and a ref x y. So again very very often used commands that you will either go with the mouse on the uh, Mac program to uh, to set them. In the next block you have uh, the uh, spindle clockwise, speed, feed, jog on, spindle, stop, speed, reset, feed, reset, jog plus and jog minus and a feed minus, speed minus and this is uh, spindle counterclockwise. And here you can go to uh, zeros, teach, stop teach, and shuttle mode. In the third block, we have X, Y, Z, A, B, Z, plus and minus. Uh, this one, I'm not sure what this means. Uh, then you have continuous jog, incremental jog, and MPT jog, and then the different speeds uh, you can do it with. So again, having the keyboard will allow you to very easily access many of the functions that you will use 
in uh, Mark III uh, with the keyboard and the mouse. It's not supposed to be a, a substitution for the normal computer keyboard. You will still need that, but you will then have a lot of options to keep your computer away, the keyboard away, and then do most of this. And I think that comes very well in hand if you, uh, for example, decide to use uh, the Ethernet port and have your computer somewhere away, then many of these functions here will be necessary to have close by the CNC, but not something you have uh, on the computer.